Hey, how you diddling? I hope you're diddling well. Today I thought I'd show you a Gatto Basque, a classic, almost like a flan, okay, with delicious frangipan meats kind of pastry. Um, and that's gonna be loaded with, traditionally it would be custard or cherry jam. I'm gonna go both, okay? So we're gonna get a tart case like so, all right? And then line it with some pastry. It's gonna be quite tricky. And then cherry jam, custard, all right, and then put a lid on top, egg wash it and bake it, and then when we turn it out and take a nice slice, you're gonna get that kind of almost crumbly, frangipan-like pastry, all right, with the cherry and then the custard. It's gonna be delicious, all right, like a sweet cherry pie. But to, to make this first, there's three things we need to do. Okay, so you need to make a custard, and I've done that in a separate video, all right? So if you look at that video, I've done that, and I've actually flavored the custard with some meadow sweet that's growing, okay, in the, in the wild now. And this will give it almost like an almondy flavor, um, which will then complement the cherries that are going in there, or the cherry jam, all right? But that's just me. Of course, you can do a plain custard or a traditional vanilla custard. So the custard will be done and made. It's really important to have that chilled. All right, then we're gonna make the, the pastry or the cake mix, all right? Um, and then once that's done, I've just got some shop-bought cherry jam and I'm gonna add some cherries to that which have been soaked in brandy as well, just to sort of jazz it up a bit or pimp it up. But there's no rules in cooking, remember. You, you do what you want or what you feel or what you have in the cupboards maybe or what's accessible to you, okay? So first things first, you wanna weigh all your ingredients are, really important to get organized, and then it makes the whole process a lot easier. Because remember, it's only three things, pastry, custard, jam, bake, and that's it. So first things first is I've weighed all my ingredients out, and I'll go through that in a moment. Then I've just taken a, a bottomless tart case, all right, and I've just brushed that with softened butter, not melted, softened, so you get a good coat in. Then I've lightly dusted that, okay, with some plain flour and tapped it out. So you've got a nice coat and that'll create a completely non-stick layer, all right? Then ingredients-wise, I've got some butter that I've just got at room temperature, sugar, caster sugar, I've used golden, some plain flour, all right? And then I've got some ground almonds, equal quantities of ground almonds and, and plain flour. And all I'm gonna do first, I am gonna use a mixer for this, and of course you can beat it by hand, it's not a problem with this quantity, but just for speed and freeze, I'm gonna use the machine. So I'm gonna pop the butter in first, along with the sugar. And I'm just gonna cream this together until nice and soft, pale and fluffy. <laughs> That's the mix done, and it will be quite firm. That's what we're looking for. And then now we need to divide this into two pieces, ready to roll out and chill in the fridge. Hey. Okay, I've divided the dough out onto some parchment, and then another piece of parchment on top. This will just make life easier, and when you go to put it in the fridge to chill, it's just easier, rather than trying to dust with flour, roll out, and all of those things. Then I've got, I don't have a rolling pin, believe it or not. As a chef, I don't have a rolling pin. <laughs> so we're gonna use a gin bottle, all right? Or whatever you've got at home. And you're just gonna gently roll it. It's very soft, this dough. So you don't need to, to roll the hell out of it and just turn it. We're gonna try and create like a round disc. This is gonna get popped in the fridge now for, I'm gonna do it for about half an hour, but the firmer the better here, so you want probably up to an hour, as firm as you can get, or put it in the freezer for like 30 minutes or so, all right? Because the firmer we can get this, the easier it's gonna make our life when we come to put it in that tart case.
this stage can be quite frustrating because it's not like like normal pastry it's going to be very kind of loose and wet so the best thing to do is just just chuck it down on the case and push it in and then you want to ease the pastry away from the paper and the odd bit will stick just take a deep breath take your time and then carefully peel the paper away and you will be left with a bit of a mix match and a, a holy kind of pastry but it's so soft and pliable now that you can just squeeze all the gaps shut, plug up any holes and really mould it into the perfect shape. So now you can see, this is real life, live cooking, cooking extreme. Look at the state of it. So now just dust your hands lightly and just push and plug up any holes. Any excess pastry, use them to fill the gaps, okay? Or any excess pastry you trim off, squeeze into a ball, and I'll show you a little trick in a moment to, uh, to make use of that and give you the perfect finish. You can just use jam for this, but if you're using the cherries, mix them through the jam to create this lovely mix. Once the custard's in, you want to pop the tart case back in the fridge just to chill down for about another 15 minutes. While the pastry case or the tart's resting, I'm just going to make a quick egg wash. So in here I've got one whole egg, one egg yolk, and I'm going to add a pinch of salt, which will help to break the eggs down and loosen them up so you get a nice even glaze when you come to brush the pastry case. And then a good pinch of sugar, and the sugar will help to brown the top as well, the sugar's going to caramelise and give us nice colour. Also, the egg yolk could do the same. It's going to give us a really rich, golden tart case or pastry. Well, this is the final stage now. And I've got my nice chilled pastry, my nice chilled Basque tart minus the lid, okay, or gato basque. And then I've got my egg wash ready and I've got a knife to, to score the top as well. So it's really important at this stage we have everything ready and try and work as, as quickly and as methodically as possible because this pastry goes soft very quickly. So this goes up and over the case. You're going to push down on the edge of the case. Quite firm, okay, right on the, on the rim there. And you can just see the ring starting to appear there. All the way around, so you're almost cutting it there. Let this old uh, 
start wearing nose boss here, really important. And then we carefully lift that paper away, being patient, just easing it away. Go on, go on, go on, go on, that's the one. Okay, we'll get rid of our excess pastry. Keep any excess pastry, pop it all together in a pile. And we can make some biscuits out of that, or you can make some biscuits. Really nice, almost like a Breton Sable style kind of biscuit in there. All right, so keep that. And then to finish this tart now, we're going to egg wash the top. And this will go back in the fridge for about another 20 minutes just to firm up for the final time. And then we give it another egg wash just before it goes in the oven. So it'll be a double egg wash. Gonna make the crosses on top. So traditionally, if this was a custard, uh, just filled with custard, they just do um, almost like a tartan effect, a lattice effect over the top. If it's just cherry, they just do a cross. Okay, because it's a bit of both, I'm gonna sort of, I don't know, make it up. I'm gonna use a, a knife as a ruler and just gently scoring in. get that in the fridge to chill for its final time before baking it in the oven with a final egg wash. Hey, we're almost there, almost. So I'm gonna give the tart case a final egg wash. It's been in the fridge for about 20 minutes and in that time I preheated uh, the oven as well. So the oven's preheated 180 degrees. Uh, ready for the tart to go in. I've also popped the tart on a baking tray with a little bit of parchment. I used some of the parchment left over from, you know, wrapping the pastry. Not because I'm tight, but I do want to save the polar bears and I'd love it if we could stop the icebergs from melting, all right? So recycle. Um, a little bit of egg wash. Beautiful. All right, lovely glazed, shiny tart case. And that's going to go in the oven now, 180 degrees, probably for about 25 to 30 minutes, then I'll check it. All right, but probably it's going to take about 40 minutes in total. All right, here we have it, fresh out the oven. Got a nice gato basque. And the key is now, is just to let it cool in the, in the tin, all right? So on a cooling rack, so the air can still circulate underneath leave it in the tin to set a little bit before you attempt to take it out. Right, it had about 25 minutes in the oven at 180 and that's it. So it's nice and crisp on top and delicate and shiny. Right, but we need to let it cool so we can just pop it out and lift it out. Right, here we have it, the moment of truth. So I'm gonna take it out of the tart case now and I find the easiest way is, is one, to let it cool a bit and two, if you get something um, to sit the tart on top, so it's bottomless at the bottom, right? So you want to pop it on something. I've got a kiln, a jar, or it could be a bowl, anything. All right? And then it will just help the case to drop away so you're not trying to prise it out of your fingers. So make sure it's cool enough to handle or touch. The last thing you want to do or be doing is trying to pick this up with a tea towel and you slip and lose your grip. So it should be cool enough so you can pick it up. It's still got some warmth in there. Then I'm going to pop it on here. And look at that. And I promise you, I didn't loosen this before. This is it's cooking live, cooking extreme. So now, I'm nervous, I had to sit down for this. We're gonna pop it back onto the cooling rack. It's still got the tin underneath. Oh, it's still hot as well, but let me just show you. You've got that beautiful Basque Gato or Gato Basque. Okay, so I'm going to let that cool. Patience, although I do want to get a spoon and uh, dig in now, but I can't. Just relax. Again, go and have another beer or wine or a cup of tea. Um, go and walk the dog. All right, and uh, we'll let this cool before we cut it open and, and see what's inside.